there you have it. As of Smart One's controlled impact, a mismatch has been found between actual moon rocks and the rocks supposedly collected during Lunar EVA. The probe has uncovered minerals different to the rocks gathered on the surface during moonwalks. Such a damning discovery that only the Australian Broadcasting Corporation picked up on this, while all other news networks ignored it. Isn't it obvious why? Like Jera, I find it interesting that the only reference worldwide to the discovery of new minerals, plural, on the moon appears to be in a news announcement that aired on Jera's TV, and that Jera coincidentally had his VCR set up to record this particular revelation. Quite a coincidence. I suspect the statement that new minerals, plural, were found on the moon was used as a commercial teaser earlier in the evening. Jera, of course, attributes the fact that only one station aired this incriminating story was due to a worldwide media conspiracy. But apparently, nobody thought to send a memo to the Australian Broadcasting Corporation to tell them not to air the true story. Right. Personally, I think the unpaid intern who was forced to write the teaser that aired that day wrote it to sound a little more sensational than it really was. You know the types of teasers I'm talking about. New credit card laws may cost you thousands of dollars. Details at 11. Nuff said. Wait, what's that I hear you say? But these different rocks that Easter analyzed came from below ground. Maybe that's why they are different to the Apollo samples. With this in mind, it can be confidently stated that the actual moon rocks are different to the Apollo samples collected above and below ground. Knowing that the Apollo rocks are different to those analysed by Smart One, what proof do we have that men actually went there? Again, according to ABC, the hole dug out by Smart One was 3 to 10 metres wide and only 1 metre deep. Jarrah tries to get as much mileage out of the ABC teaser as possible. However, his conclusions are based on an analysis by the Smart One spacecraft during a controlled impact that didn't really happen. The analysis, that is and the results of earthbound observations of the flash of light and the dust that was kicked up during the impact were not available until several days later. And what were the new minerals that Smart One was supposed to have found? In an attempt to address this omission, Jerem muddles the crash of Smart One in with an earlier article published by ESA about Smart One's X-ray mapping experiment. They found that the calcium detected from orbit was in agreement to that found by Luna 24 on the surface of Mere Chrysium. As Smart One flew on, it swept DCIXS over the nearby Lunar Highland regions. Calcium showed up here too, which was a surprise until the scientists looked at the data from another Russian moon mission, Luna 20. That lander had also found calcium back in the 1970s. So it seems, the actual moon rocks are different to the Apollo samples, but not the Soviet samples. Evidently, either the Russian moon rocks were never identical to their American counterparts in the first place, or ESA is covering for Mother Russia and forgot to cover for NASA. What? This scenario is so convoluted you would need a road map to figure it out. Jera is referring to this ESA article, published August 18, 2006, two weeks before Smart One's impact, which talks about the DCIXS, DESIX, the Global X-ray Mapping Spectrometer Experiment. The DESIX found calcium in the Mare Crisium region that agreed with samples returned from that area by Luna 24. Calcium also lit up in a nearby highland region, which agreed with samples returned from that area by Luna 20. What's remarkable about these findings is not that calcium was found, but that it was the first remote detection of the element calcium on the moon. Reading further, the article explains that by comparing orbital observations of previous landing sites to ground truth, that is, the analysis of samples brought back by the lunar landing sites, the ESA scientists had greater confidence that their equipment was working correctly. This exact comment about ground truth appears verbatim in an earlier ESA article from July 20, 2006, which states that the Apollo landing sites were used as calibration points because they already had detailed analysis of what minerals should be there. By comparing the DESIX measurements to ground truths in those areas and getting a match, they were then more certain that their equipment was functioning correctly. 
That means that if they were to find different minerals on different parts of the moon later on, then they would have greater confidence that those new minerals were really there. And we could potentially send future missions to those areas and see what's up. Nowhere does ESA say that they made remote observations of the Apollo landing sites that were inconsistent with the materials brought back from those sites. And I don't understand why Jarrah would think that calcium was the new mineral discovered during the Smart One impact. First off, calcium is a common element, not a mineral, found in moon rocks. In fact, Jarrah mentions the existence of calcium in lunar rock twice in his video series. First, when he reads from the National Geographic Picture Atlas of Our Universe, published in 1980, Maybe the moon and the earth were formed at the same time, out of the same gas and dust. The same elements are found on both. Calcium, aluminium, titanium, magnesium, silicon, oxygen, iron, but in far different proportions. And again, when he reads from Michael Davidson's paper, Moon Rocks Under the Microscope, which first appeared in the July 1993 edition of Microscopy and Analysis. Mere basalts are volcanic lavas generally rich in iron and titanium oxide minerals that formed when molten rock from the interior of the moon surfaced and cooled. Chemically, the rock is about 42% silicon dioxide, 22% ferrous oxide, with the rest being mainly magnesium, calcium, and aluminium oxides. And now we are to believe that calcium was newly discovered by Smart One in 2006. How? This is the reason why I would never be a good conspiracy theorist. I don't think I have the mental capacity to keep all the conflicting stories straight and know which one to apply in any given situation. It's much simpler to stick with the facts. That way you only have to remember one story, and it always applies. So, at the end of the day, even though Jera found a newscast suggesting that Smart One uncovered new minerals, plural, during a controlled impact, that newscast fails to reveal exactly what those new minerals are, and there has been nothing subsequently published to identify those new minerals. But so what? Scientists expect to find new minerals, different from the minerals in the Apollo moon rocks, in regions not previously explored by manned missions. And the source that Jerry uses to conclude that calcium is the new mineral or element that Smart One discovered also states that Smart One's remote analysis of the Apollo landing sites are consistent with the minerals found in NASA's moon rocks. So, in conclusion to the moon rock portion of Jerry's video series, Jarrah's most damning evidence that NASA's moon rocks are fake, the presumed existence of new minerals, plural, found on the moon by Smart One, turns out to be nothing more than a red herring. And unless I miss something, this is the last of Jarrah's claims regarding the authenticity of NASA's moon rocks. Hooray! None of Jarrah's claims have held up to even the most rudimentary scrutiny. Not one piece of evidence that he offers has pan out to be anything more than misinterpreted or unrelated facts and half-truths clouded by bare assertions and innuendo. He has failed to discredit the most overwhelming evidence that the Apollo missions were real. The existence of rocks and soil samples from the lunar surface, brought back by the Apollo astronauts. We could stop here, but the real fun stuff is yet to come. Stay tuned for videos on lunar laser ranging and Apollo mission telecommunications. Ciao, moon hoax conspirators. Wherever you are.